before SpaceX can try again to send its massive Starship rocket into orbit, the company is repairing and renovating its badly damaged launch site in southern Texas. And this time, SpaceX bets all on steel plates to keep the launch pad from blowing up. Immediately after the explosion of Ship 24 and Booster 7, SpaceX promptly enacted their plan. Presently, SpaceX is actively preparing for the installation of steel plate components into the launch pad foundation. Amidst widespread speculation regarding the structure of the steel plate, our understanding greatly improved when Mr. O released this render depicting its design. He assumed that it is the water-cooled steel plate that would look something like this. First off, let's look at the size of those pipes. Must be incredibly huge. And accordingly, there will be a giant main water pipe below, connecting 18 smaller pipes to bring water to the surface. That is going to be a lot of welding. Additionally, there will be six parts like this installed under the launch mount foundation, fit into a hexagon. This will most definitely require huge pumps. On the surface, it will be designed like a shower to spray water on. Thanks to Mr. O and all all of the others who found the components and determined how they would fit together and rendered the results. However, this rendering was created based on the photos taken at Starbase. We still must wait for confirmation from SpaceX once the steel plate is installed to validate its accuracy. Back at the launch pad at this time, the crane is still continuing to excavate. Other giant hands are also cleaning things around here. Another team installed these high-pressure gas tanks next to the tank farm. We discussed this in the previous episode. Ship 25 has also received attention at this time. The company first moved it in late April on the 16th from the Massey test site. However, after covering a certain distance, SpaceX eventually rolled it back to Massey's. It could be a problem with the road or with the SPMTs. It is possible that they're just testing the roll to check all is well ahead of the road closure. We can't tell from a distance, so we need to get really close or just wait for you know, SpaceX to confirm. Luckily, Shift 25 was rolling again to the suborbital pad A last night. While the plan ahead for Shift 25 remains a secret, SpaceX probably won't be using it for a second orbital flight. Basically, Shift 25 has been built exactly like Shift 24, the prototype that flew last month. Anyway, this is just our guess. How about you? Tell me your thoughts in the comment section down below. In other news, Musk recently shared that we're getting great use out of Massey's gun range. SpaceX purchased Massey earlier this year. Massey's gun range is being turned into a rocket test facility. Perfect match, Musk announced in January. The location is approximately 15 minutes away from the launch site along the same Highway 4 road. The acquired land is expected to be used for Raptor engine testing and repairs. Since SpaceX operations began in 2019, it has attracted hundreds of tourists to Boca Chica Beach. People would go check out the Starbase launch site and then go to Massey's gun shop and range for target practice activities. According to local residents, the shooting range is still open at a different location along the State Highway 4 road that leads to Starbase. The company has purchased multiple parcels of land in the Sandy region, including homes that have been transformed into offices, resting spaces, and even an Ad Astra child care school for employees. Don't know why they need to go to child care school. Do they need to learn how to take care of their children? Like, what's up? All bad jokes aside, Starbase also also has a restaurant bar that serves employees drinks and warm meals, unless you want them cold, among other amenities. Okay, that's the last bad joke, I'm sorry. Now, let's learn more about Axiom Space's Axe 2, which is scheduled to launch in just a few days. If all goes according to plan, a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket will launch an international crew of four from Path 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida on Sunday afternoon, May 21st, kicking off the roughly 10-day Axe 2 
flight. Freedom will take about 16 hours to reach the ISS docking at the orbiting lab on Monday morning, May 22nd. The four X-2 crew members will live alongside the station's current crew for eight days, which they'll spend conducting independent research and technology demonstrations and performing education and outreach activities. X-2 is scheduled to undock from the ISS's Harmony module at the end of May. Freedom will then descend through Earth's atmosphere and splash down in the ocean off the coast of Florida. Once aboard the space station, the X-2 crew will have a busy schedule of research experiments and technology demonstrations. In total, the crew plans to conduct 20 or more investigations, including an assemblage of DNA-based nanomaterials with uses in cartilage repair, microgravity effects on mRNA decay, photographing lightning strikes, and high-altitude transient luminous events, known as sprites, from the ISS cupola window, and several educational collaborations to perform STEM-focused activities with school children across the globe. Meanwhile, regarding the Chinese space station, China recently called for space station commercial cargo proposals. The China Manned Space Engineering Office, or CMSEO, announced on May 16th that it is seeking to reduce the cost and enhance the flexibility of sending supplies to the Tiangong space station by exploring the development of commercial space models. The program echoes NASA's own commercial resupply services program, which awarded contracts in late 2008 to Orbital Science Corporation and SpaceX, and saw the first cargo flights to the ISS in 2012. The program played a role in the development of the SpaceX Falcon 9 and Dragon cargo spacecraft, as well as the Antares and the Orbital Sciences Corporations, and Taurus Launcher and Cygnus spacecraft. Such a move to foster synergies and innovation from China's nascent commercial space sector could provide impetus to and advantages for the country's wider space ambitions. Tomas Rodzinski, a senior research fellow at the European Space Policy Institute, or ESPI, shared that the CMSEO proposal is a clear indication that China is seeking to replicate the approach which yielded NASA's major success. Arguably, in the U.S. case, the increasing adoption of market-inspired practices by public actors in the past couple of decades, in particular the clear shift to purchasing services instead of contracting the private sector to develop solutions based on more traditional cost-plus contracts, has grown in breadth and depth indicating positive outcomes for the public sector, Rozensky wrote. By more actively embracing commercial participation, China appears to confirm the increasingly recognized benefits of such an approach in stimulating technological innovation in their space industry, and through this also enhancing their space capabilities at large. Rozensky also noted that commercial entities bring fresh perspectives, flexibility, and a relentless drive for efficiency that can lead to unexpected and rapid advance, citing the innovation boom witnessed in the U.S. following NASA's CRS program. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you soon.